Good morning and uh, welcome to our ERC from the field where I am uh, pleased to host uh, Sebastian Schnaubelt who is one of our young uh, ERC uh, members. Sebastian, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Sebastian? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. So, Sebastian, I uh, was told you are working in uh, Vienna, is that correct? Yes, I'm, I'm working in Vienna, in Austria. Um, I'm a junior resident in emergency medicine, but um, at the moment I'm rotating, I've rotated uh, to a COVID ICU, um, so yeah. So I imagine that uh, rotating in a, in a COVID ICU uh, has been a challenging uh, experience. Uh, could, could you share some of those uh, things that, that most uh, struck you during the, the beginning and, and the crisis? Sure. Um, as you know, it's uh, very difficult because there's so little evidence and especially in the beginning, there was no evidence at all we could rely on. And of course, we, we prepared and uh, we like um, got resources free for COVID patients. And we, we had, of course, uh, just COVID ICUs, um, so not to mix patients. And we were waiting and then the first patients came in and we tried to uh, like look at data from China obviously and also Italy because uh, we were a bit later than Italy to get those patients uh, just to have an idea on what the clinical picture would look like and we were surprised that um, they really performed uh, very similarly to all the patients in China and Italy so like okay um, so we're gonna face it like like um, our colleagues in China and Italy did. Um, so we got those patients and um, we saw, of course, um, the patients doing very badly because all the other patients obviously uh, were either at home or at normal wards. So we got all the patients with you know, massive respiratory failure. We had to intubate them straight away because they deteriorated so fast. And what we saw is all the patients we got uh, went directly into multi-organ failure. You know, you know, not only having that respiratory issue, but also cardiac involvement uh, with uh, rhythm logic problems, cardiac tamponade, all that stuff, and also kidney failure. So all those patients had um, well required dialysis, and all that, of course produce a massive workload for the, for the whole team. And so I would say those two things, uh, first thing being the lack of evidence, not being sure what to do, not being sure what path to follow because every two days new evidence came out and was published. Um, that was challenging. And the second part was this massive um, workload for, for the whole team and, you know, putting on protective gear and putting it off, putting it on, putting it off. And that was, I think, challenging, especially in the beginning. Yes, you, you mentioned in the beginning a, a lack of, uh, of, of materials. Uh, were there any, was that personal protection that you were lacking or, or medications or, or even staff that uh, at a certain point was lacking? Um, I think we, we tried to prepare, of course, but um, in the beginning, it was the biggest problem, I think, was staff, um, because those patients are very complex and you need more staff than usual, uh, especially more nursing staff, because um, all the nursing colleagues, they spend hours and hours uh, with the patients, you know, adapting and putting them into prone position and putting them back again. And that just takes more personal or more personnel resources than usual. And we weren't used to that, so we had to adapt. And of course, personal protective um, equipment was an issue. But um, I think our government did really good, and they tried to you know, buy more stuff and, and uh, provide us with, with uh, refills. And so that wasn't that much of a problem. 
Okay. Well, there I, I imagine it's uh, been a, a very stressful and, and uh, hard uh, way of working for the, the nurses and, and the doctors. Was there any, any support, anything put in place by the hospital to, to cope with, uh, with this extra uh, mental and, and physical stress? Um, well, mainly we did it ourselves, I would say. We talked a lot um, you know, to each other as we would usually do. But there were also psychologists in place in case we, we needed them. It wasn't the case so much, but uh, I think mainly it was like teamwork and, and uh, teammates you, you could talk to and talk you through because obviously that was a very stressful situation with you know also a high mortality rate um, and a lot of frustration also because you, you spend weeks um, trying to save the patient and then he just deteriorates and you can't save them. And this is at a much higher rate than usual. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Sebastian, for sharing this uh, personal experience uh, from, uh, from the crisis and for taking uh, a little bit of your time to be uh, with us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.